All right, hey everybody, welcome to year six best of. Not only is this a celebration of, you know, about 55 episodes of highlights, but it is also the official kickoff of year seven, which is insane. I say this time and time again, it is insane to me that we have been doing this for seven years. Obviously, Brian will make some joke about how it feels about three. <laughs> so I'm just going to beat him to his punchline. <laughs> uh, you grew up in my household, so you know that we don't recycle. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so real quick before we dive into this episode, just wanted to like sit down and reminisce a little bit about the the year. This whole year was recorded in a pandemic. This entire best of. Uh, it's the first best of where there isn't a single moment where we saw each other face to face. Well, I've seen Brian a few times, but you know what a I mean. A whole bunch. A whole bunch. But, you know, we we covered some good, some bad, and some indifferent throughout the year. Uh, but just curious, some of your highlights. What are, highlights, what are things you remember? Are there episodes that jump out at you as just absolute classics, conversations, topics, etc.? Did I uh, bow out of popcorn? No, you were there. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Don't remember that one. <laughs> Man, I- I'm looking at the list and I am so proud of what I picked. Like I – man, it's going to be hard for me to ever hit this level of shit that makes me happy ever again. Like kicking it off with blood hook. Oh my god, I love Blood Hook. I could watch that movie literally Brian, once every four months. Brian's Brian's is more entertaining for me to look at because because there's so many mistakes. The same it, gets, it gets increasingly better over time, but yeah. it's like Planet of the Vampires, Devil Times Five. I Nightmare remember, yeah, at you, noon. what you were doing is you're like, guys, I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry. But like, and I was like, guys, this is the best. Like Blood Hook, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, From Dusk Till Dawn. Bride of Reanimator, uh, Elvira. What else? I mean, Night of the Demons two. Oh God, damn! I killed it. Motel Hell. You know, like Dead Heat. Dead Heat was a total, total like softball for Brian. And man, we had some good stuff this year. But I will say, I really loved. The, I think that one of the best movies that I had never seen before, like a real out of left field movie for uh, for me. In, to, in uh, 2020, well, and also, you know, in, in year six, um, I think top of the list for me has to be My Best Friend is a Vampire. Oh, I thought you were going to say Devil Times Five. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't. <laughs> you fuck. I, I appreciate that, man. I, I've i been talking about that specific movie for years, like literal years. Yeah, um, I, honestly, looking through everything that we did, absolutely. No question top of the heap as far as movies that like were not on my radar and blew me away with how good it was because i had no expectation of liking that movie (laughs) uh i'm looking at the list as well and i can tell you this is going to sound shitty because it's one that i picked and i'm not saying that i think that the movie was the best but i just remember that episode being one that i listened to quite a bit like i re-listened to it on multiple occasions because it made me laugh so much was our episode on Jaws 3D. I remember that just being a very funny episode, Uh, mostly from Brian. Uh, Brian specifically being so annoyed at the one actor not knowing what a shark is. (laughs) (laughs) What is that thing? (laughs) Yeah, good God. Uh, I liked, I didn't like My Mom's Werewolf, but I liked Bacon on that episode for sure. Yep. I mean, that That was the, we did a full month of having guests on the show. Uh, So I do want to do a quick shout out to to all the people that joined us throughout. That was when we had Steven from Analog Jones joined us for Rumpelstiltskin. Bacon joined us for My Mom's a Werewolf. Joey from Dark Hills Gaming joined us for Crawl Space. And then, you know, our good buddy Kyle joined us for the Fun House. I got to say, Joey made that Crawl Space episode tolerable. Like, not, not listening back to it but rather recording it because that oh, if he was not on there without him being on there that would have been a 10 minute episode yeah. with us suddenly going to double features um not not the best year for 
for listeners submitting, to be fair. But I do think that all four episodes were funny. But man, only Funhouse did I have any fun watching out of that batch. Well, so what were the four? Uh, it was Rumble Still Skid, My Mom's a Werewolf, Crawl Space, and Fun. Oh, those were all listener picks. That was all listener yeah. picks. Yeah, that was the the run. Dude, of were you blaming picks. yourself for some of those? <laughs> yeah, I was blaming myself for Rumble Still Skin. I mean, it seems like something you would pick. Actually, seems like something a like Kelly a brother would pick because mm. <laughs> um, I don't remember a whole lot of moments from specific episodes. Uh, they all blend together because I don't edit them. You do. Uh, yeah. But man, Bad Dreams, not a great movie had a an absolute blast discussing it and, and i think that the highlight for me was definitely when we discussed the gore showers mm. <laughs> i i also literally the movie after bad dreams we did my bloody valentine oh, so good. and like i feel like that was the first time that i watched that movie and was fully like this is a movie i actually love like <laughs> Like it was like a movie I owned and would like occasionally put on, but wouldn't think much of. But like that viewing was like the viewing that like it all unlocked for me. Kind of similar to Disturbing Behavior a couple episodes later. Oh, like man, Disturbing those were movies that great rewatch. Yeah, like they were just like I I kind of forgotten their existence. Um, the big thing that we need to shout out though, every year we've tried to do something for April Fool's Day. But <laughs> I I think that the way we went all in on teen flick movie night will forever be a positive memory for me. That was and the theme song, Scott, dear God, the theme Thank song you, was per- perfection. I, yeah, I want to do great. a full version of it um, with actual real <laughs> horns because those are synth horns like the I, I. So here's the story. I don't think I actually explained this, but um, so I, I wrote the theme song. It happened. I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take the cadence and some of the melody from the intro riff of the regular HMN theme. And if you listen to them back to back, they really are sister songs, you know, like they, the, okay. the melodies are, are almost identical, um, but one's in major, one's in minor. So I, I took that and, and I started humming along and I was like, okay, how can I make this a ska song? Cause that was obviously going to be the, the horns. And, um, so I, I wrote it, transcribed it. It happened in like an afternoon, I wrote the lyrics super fast too. Um, I know that it's only a 22 or 26 second segment and people probably think that you can shit those out in an afternoon, but you have to get struck with that little bit of lightning, you know, to, to make it work. And so, cause horror movie night, the horror movie night theme took me weeks, you know, like it was not easy <laughs> and this was much easier, but yeah, I, I, uh, and then I was like, well, I can't play any horns and, uh, you know, the, the synth ones sound like absolute garbage. And so I went on Fiverr and I found some dude in like Sweden. Those are synth um, horns and he did a little bit of arranging and um, mixed it and mastered it for me. It was so hard for me not to share it with you guys before he gave me the fu- the finished product because I was I was in the shower and, and just humming along, you know, knowing what it was going. <laughs> that's that's the mark of a song that I'm happy with. Like 2020, I um my greatest achievement was the stuff for uh, WNUF two uh the sequel that it, there's um a segment called mega martian fight force that i did for my our buddy chris la martina um i did the music for it it's ripping off power rangers and yes. um that was the I, best I'm thing that i wrote he didn't ask me to just do that theme <laughs> I'm, I'm so proficient in doing um, power rangers covers that i i think i could give them something really beautiful <laughs> but um you know that was the that was definitely the gem um in my crown for 2020 and you know, I know we're only a couple months into, you know, halfway into um, 2021 right now, but I'm going to be hard fucking pressed to top the Team Flick movie night theme. <laughs> yeah, I think Brian texted us that same day and was like, it is a travesty that this song is only going to get heard <laughs> once ever. <laughs> like, it's, it is it is one of your finest works. Uh, mm-hmm. But honestly, I, I mean, I know that we, he gets awkward when you shower him with praise. Um, but Brian, man, really, I think this year... Brian came to play on on the podcast. I, I think I cannot this- wait to hear what what's your best of comes out to be because last year really was Brian Zinger. He you talked way more this year. You finally got comfortable with us. It only took three and a half years, but but we're there. And now we're recording about me talking, and I'm silent. Yeah, <laughs> so. no, I mean that's how it goes. But no, I, I do think that. Especially like, I think the flip side was that really in 2021, as much as we bust your chops for 2020, 
your picks in 2021 were like almost exclusively premium picks. Oh like, yeah, he'll never. You, I, I don't know if you'll ever be able to touch that again. Just like I wasn't able to. I don't think I'll ever be able to touch my 2020 picks. I had a real great run, and you've had a real great run, and I think you're about to get. It's about to get runny if I uh, <laughs> if I'm looking. Yeah. No, I, no. I, I don't know. You, you've got some good stuff. You got some fire coming up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with you. Everything until the. Uh, until until um september yeah we're everybody listening get ready for a lot of good brian picks until september when we have listeners submit a month and you make us hurt <laughs> yeah <laughs> um they'll definitely decline um <laughs> because based off what i picked what, what what's already been put out what we're going to record and stuff that's been recorded prior to me here we already tackled all my favorite movies because that's kind of what i did differently this year i like did like the town that dreaded sundown and i picked my bloody valentine right yep yeah like house of the devil Oof. Oof. That, although that's a Chucky, great movie yeah. but not like really a great movie to discuss on this show no and actually my least favorite episode i know this is the best up but i do want to say my least favorite episode <laughs> this year was krampus because Oof. it really pained me how much I didn't like that movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? It like yeah, bothered no. me that I had to get honest and be like, this sucks. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, I felt the same way. I feel like that was like one of the, if I'll be totally honest, one of the scariest episodes we've ever had to record because it was like, all of us are just new going into it. That's like none of our, our listeners usually back us a lot. No one's backing us on this. We, yeah. we are all going to say that we hate this movie and there's not going to be a single damn person listening that's like, you know what? They raised some good points. <laughs> like they're, yeah. they're just going to come for us. And and we went into it knowing um, at the time that we're recording this, I've only pulled a couple clips. I don't even know what you guys are going to hear. So I can't give you like a like a quick like, oh, here's a here's a taste of what's to come. But I did want to give a shout out to a movie that there wasn't any moments that when I was listening to it, I pulled, but is one that I do have kind of fond memories of us talking about just in general was uh, what I'll say is the last 20 minutes of body parts um, (laughs) was was a good time. The, The rest of that movie is whatever. But those last arguably arguably among the best 20 final minutes of any movie we discussed this year <laughs> but yeah it's uh it was a good year i'm always just love being around you guys unless things unexpectedly take a very bad turn for the worst uh we're just a couple weeks away from me doing my first convention appearance in like a year and a half which is in actually i guess closer to two years because the last yeah. one would have been in september so yep. it'll be august when i go back but scares that care if you're in the north carolina virginia type area um worth coming up it's a good convention that raises money for a really good cause i'm excited to like get to 2022 get back into the con season like full force just hugs and and mouth-to-mouth kisses (laughs) (laughs) Just amongst the three of I'm us. I'm going to be doing a lot of elbow bumps, you know? <laughs> well, I'm not talking about with the fans. I'm just talking about amongst the oh, three of okay. us. <laughs> lots, of sand, yeah, lots of hand sanitizer, guys. Just get ready. I thought you were about to say sandwiches. Lots of jelly sandwiches. Oh my. <laughs> hey, hey uh, Brian, so uh, how did you like that PB&J? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> yeah, and how much I've grown since then because – I eat a beats like for breakfast, lunch, and dinner now. You know, it was a big <laughs> thing there. Where I was like, ah, "You want me to have a beats twice, lunch <laughs> and dinner?" That is true. You man, the beats. Now the I just beats put you know, hey, on when pizza's on a bagel, breakfast. you can have pizza anytime. <laughs> That's yeah. true. It's yeah. cookies for breakfast. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I think that's enough of us. And then enjoy these clips of some of our favorite moments. Over the last year. So I talked about this with you guys in the chat a little bit that I had some thoughts. And the thing that bothers me from this movie is that like the pacing and the story beats in this movie are completely fucking insane because it does things, but then like completely like it's just padding for time the whole movie. So like they have this whole setup 
to catch D. Snyder's character. And it's all like a bluff, you know, like they they go to the wrong house. And then it's like five minutes later, they find D. Snyder anyway. Like, it doesn't make any sense for that beat to be in that movie if you're literally going to find him just a couple minutes later anyway. And then he goes to prison and you think that this is going to be like a Clockwork Orange type movie, which would have been interesting. But it's not. <laughs> He's just <laughs> like, like everything that happens in the movie doesn't really connect or make any sense yeah. whatsoever like it's so frustrating from like a story writing standpoint to watch this this movie is the epitome of one thing led to another yeah That's the whole movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's got a lot of yada 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 <laughs> right in it. it's yeah. like so they show up at the house but it's not d snyder's house yada 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 they find d snyder yeah. <laughs> like... yada 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 he's cured yada 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 <laughs> he's no longer cured yeah, like... i feel like this is basically one run-on <laughs> sentence with yeah. a lot of and thens <laughs> yeah but it's, it is oddly prescient when she's like oh we'll meet everyone we date online eventually because welcome to 2020 well yeah. welcome to 2019 no one's having sex now unless you're already <laughs> Married and not having sex. Yeah. Or, you know, engaged and not having sex. But um, right now there's a small fraction of humans that had just recently moved in with a girl or they spend a lot of nights at each other's house and they're on quarantine and they're having sex all day. But it is a very, very small percentage. You're either (laughs) not living with someone because you're single or you're living with someone but sex has just been off the table for for years now. <laughs> Dude, I, I gotta get I gotta get real with you. It's not about sex being off the table for years. It's about the fact that it's really hard to take your mind off of a global fucking pandemic to get a boner. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't understand these people who are, who are like, oh yeah, let's bang four times today, honey. I'm like. Have you thought about how many people are dying? I know. Jade had to go to the post office yesterday, and she came back, and she was, like, being cute and, like, leaned over my shoulder while I was working, and I told her to get the hell away from me. <laughs> you were like, did you wash your hands? She did. She sanitized, but her hands, that's it. You, you, you covered a small fraction of your body to make sure they're clean, and then you're just rubbing your rona shirt all over my shoulder (laughs) (laughs) this is not my fetish (laughs) so about night beast i saw the picture when we watched it on the movie and i was like we have to pick that i realized that i am officially a co-host of this show i've gotten to a point where where i am ingrained in this show and there's a simple (laughs) test right when you first get on this show you see that fucking trauma in the beginning and you're like, oh, fuck, it's trauma. <laughs> and, then, and then after a while, you're just like, oh, fuck, it's trauma. And that's exactly because I didn't know when I picked it that it was a trauma film. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, fuck my ass. It's trauma. <laughs> <laughs> I will say like the first 10, 10 to 20 minutes, I thought I was so happy with my choice. And then this movie is like 90, like the first 15 minutes is like 30 deaths yeah (laughs) there are so many people that get fucking murdered in this i know and i was like man at first keep in mind this is my first time watching so the first 15 20 minutes is like dude i might throw this in the fucking hat for our pilot just because as the editor i (laughs) saw was like oh i could have some fun editing some fucking skits around this you know just like the cheesy lasers and everything yeah and then it it just turned to a bad movie quickly (laughs) we've said this before you know last week we did horror at party beach and i feel like my feelings of horror on party beach are similar to night beast where when horror at party beach is the actual party beach and there's a horror happening at it it's great and when there's a beast at night killing people, this movie is great. <laughs> but in both cases, when it goes to like the scientists, or in this case, the police officers trying to solve the mi- the mystery of the night beast or horror at Party Beach, uh, loses my interest. Jaws 3D. You know the old adage about Jaws movies, they're just like tits. One isn't enough and three's too many. So welcome to <laughs> our movie night's episode on Jaws 3D. I hate Dennis Quaid in this movie. Why? Why? Because what? what's his job here? <laughs> he built the, the Cave of Wonders. But he also went scuba diving, correct? Yeah, he went scuba diving because, you know, he's got to make sure that 
you know, he's just checking shit out. He's he's taking advantage of his all access pass to Sea World while he builds the Cape of Wonders. <laughs> so in order to go scuba diving, you have to have a scuba diving sort of certification. So it's safe to assume that he understands what fish are, right? <laughs> so, so after clearly being chased by a shark and getting out of the water and saying, "What the hell was that? What was that? <laughs> oh it was a God. shark, Dennis. It was a shark." They had never tested the mechanic shark in actual salt water. So That's when right, they yeah. put it in the water, it broke constantly, and they were running so far behind. They were like, "Well, let's just make the camera the shark." So instead of you seeing it for like the first hour and a half of the movie. You are the shark. Like you're kind of, it's got that Michael Myers killer POV type aspect. And it just made it that much more disturbing because it's like, oh man, I have no clue what this thing looks like, but I am watching it just go on a killing spree. You, you don't have a, you don't have a clue what it looks like. I mean, I have a, yeah. I mean, if I was Dennis, Dennis yeah. Quaid, yeah. Dennis yeah. Quaid was like, what, what the heck was that? that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What could this thing be? Does it have legs? Does it have a tail? <laughs> yeah, I guess the poster has a shark on it. That's a pretty good tip off. <laughs> I'd put this with King Kong. I would double feature it with King Kong the original. Where they Any take reason? a they take a uh, big old monkey and put him in uh, for people's amusement. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And then he escapes, and then uh, <laughs> and then insanity ensues. So if you think about it, Jaws three is exactly like King Kong. <laughs> also, I've been going to bed earlier because I've been getting up earlier. So Jade's been staying up and watching Forensic Files, and it's what I fall asleep to. But when you're listening, you see the show in a whole different perspective. And I got to give a shout out to some of the people on Forensic Files because. The show's called Forensic Files, so all the attention goes to the forensic team. You know, these these high-class scientists, but the average Joe does so much for that show, and they barely get acknowledged. Like, it's like, you know, we found the woman murdered, and there was nothing on the crime scene except for a half of a ticket from a carnival, and we brought it there, and the guy on this... Uh, pirate ship ride was like yeah i remember that guy he came in here he had a mustache and black hair i thought it was weird he only gave me half a ticket and then when we tracked that down to the walmart employee they were like yeah this guy bought rope and tape and knives and then they were like i think he said something to me about going to the bar and like it's all these average people that are actually just have the best memory i've ever seen in my life and they're just <laughs> literally pointing these police officers in the right direction and get and then at the end it's just the police department patting their own back like yep good police and good science is what solved this case and it's like <laughs> no joe at the carnival solved this case you guys just listen to him so shout out to joe at the carnival huh. oh oh his girlfriend his girlfriend yeah. i thought you were talking about the girl that got tommy boyd um, oh, no, she didn't get Tommy Boyd. She got ghoulied. <laughs> yeah. They'll get, get ghoulied. you in the end. <laughs> <laughs> that toilet death was like the whole trailer for this movie back in 1998. Great times. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk. Let's talk about trailers because I have nothing to talk about this movie. Um, I, I, and, and then we'll get back to the movie. I just want to point out something. And, and Amazon Prime, if you're listening, I appreciate if you don't have a trailer at hand to just take a clip from a movie. But could you try a little harder? Because every time I'm like, I wonder if this movie's good. And I, it's a horror movie, too. And I hit view trailer, and it's just like a guy sipping a cup of coffee at, at the kitchen table. And his wife's like, long day. He's like, yep. What do you got to do? Go to work. And then it just fades out. And I know nothing about the movie. I'm about to watch. <laughs> well, I think that there are two things that you need to, to realize here. One, this that's kind of like the antithesis to all of the trailers that show you everything and suck. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way they, things used to be. I mean, before COVID. But now you got so you got the antithesis and you're like, oh, I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> well, but also, your, your problem is that you're expecting quality anything from Amazon Prime. But let's talk about the rich yacht cruise ship owner villain who is introduced in this movie when the monster hasn't attacked yet. And he gives this speech where he's declaring it toast and he's like, so delightful, so wonderful, so rich. And then like the whole Everybody crowd's just laughs. like... <laughs> 
<laughs> First of all, the Titanic, right? The Titanic, <laughs> that could have been an insurance scam. I'm not saying it was, but I'm saying it could have been and it would have been Get a good one. Get out of here with your goddamn conspiracy theories. It's I'm too early. Saying, I'm just saying it could have been and that's a good one. Like, oh, you hit a you hit an iceberg, no questions asked. If you're trying to pull one over on the insurance, you don't think they're going to investigate torpedoes hitting your ship? <laughs> they're not going to look any further into that and be like, oh, a classic case of shot down by torpedoes. Open and shut case, Johnson. Let's give them their money. That is such a – that is the one thing that could happen to a ship that requires a deep investigation, I feel like. When there were drive-ins and you were making these like very inexpensive movies just – for like, you know, Grindhouse movies for Mm -hmm. a drive-in. The whole point was to give away everything because it was like, oh, people are going to be there, so might as well let them know exactly what they're in for. I mean, my impression of the drive-ins, especially in the 70s, was an excuse to have sex in the back of a car while a movie was playing. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's... It was Netflix and chill before Netflix. Yeah, I think Brian said that, yeah. Netflix is really fucking up Netflix and chill because they're putting out good content like imagine yeah. scott imagine this and or maybe you're not as much of a loser as me but imagine <laughs> it's your first time watching the haunting of hill house and megan starts kissing your neck what do you do honestly i say stop we're yeah. watching haunting of hill house <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know what i mean you can't netflix and chill with the content they're putting out you netflix and netflix and that's it <laughs> when the monster has a little bit of an alien vibe and then the mouth comes out it's a pretty yeah. cool monster before yeah. that it's just a villain on power rangers uh, <laughs> <laughs> also the reason why matt picked it yeah. yeah so there's this i believe this is rated pg which is Kind of weird, but also totally makes sense because there's always like the threat of nudity and there's always like (laughs) the threat of blood, but like you don't see any of it. But there's this this weird shower gag. The shower. Yeah. Yeah. Where the wife is in the shower and it like plays the psycho card like four times in a row where it's always her husband just checking in on her. But leading up to that, she's just standing in the shower, sensually rubbing her wet shoulder for like three minutes. I have a note about that. (laughs) Ever notice how people shower in movies and how unrealistic it is? This woman is massaging her right shoulder with a look of pure bliss on her face. I may spend 10 minutes under the scalding hot water during my showers, but I've got a scowl on my face as I go over all of my personal failings and all the things I've never accomplished in life. (laughs) Half the time he's like, you are magic, you black as pitch. And then another time he's just like, how are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. They keep forgetting. Don't bust my ump, lady. I've waited too long. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's two things that really bother me that ha- it's a trope in so many. I don't know why this movie brought it out of me, but there's two tropes in these type of movies that drive me crazy. One of them is like, oh, I'm stuck in 300 years from now. So half the way I speak is I don't understand what a car is. And then the other one is like, ah, oh, fucking suck my dick. You know, like. <laughs> 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 And then the other thing is just when you have something that's so dangerous, don't hide it in a thrift store. Why does everyone hide it in a thrift store? And, and then, she's also like, that's not for you. And then she's like, oh, how much? And she's and she's like, well, money's money. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Yeah. Steven, do you have any buyer's remorse for this being the one that you picked? Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny that you say buyer's remorse because he did. He bought it. Yeah. Uh, no, I actually traded for this. Uh, so I had two Uncle Sams and I'm like, I contacted the guy and he's like, well, I got the screener copy of Rumpelstiltskin. And I'm like, I'll give you an Uncle Sam. <laughs> no, not Uncle Billy, Sam. Billy, 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 Billy. <laughs> that is so great. That is just two people. That is that is two Pokemon traders trading one Diglett for a Zubat card. Like, I don't have any value. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Dude, Tubi sucks. I'm just saying it. All you guys on our Facebook page worshiping Tubi because they have an extensive list of movies, but their commercials are the most obnoxiously placed commercials I've ever fucking seen in a movie. Like, I've watched movies on TV. There's always fade out points where you can easily put a trailer or a commercial, but they put commercials like mid sentence of fucking scenes. It's obnoxious. Yeah, it is. But at the same time, I am drinking a Truly and I just went to Burger King, so I feel great. (laughs) (laughs) There were so many Burger King commercials. I'm like, come on, guys. 
can we just mix these up a little bit? Wait, so uh, did you still watch it on Tubi even though you got it yeah. on a VHS? Tape? So it's an interesting <laughs> thing with this screener copy. The screener copy is on extended play, which is, you know, what most companies do when they have like a really long movie and they got to shove it all in one tape. Well, this place who send in all these free screener copies, they put it on extended play for like, I don't know, uh, what is this, a 90 minute movie and then some trailers beforehand. It's so bad that 30 minutes in, I go, F this, I'm going to Tubi. <laughs> <laughs> This movie is not about the props or the monsters. It's about the sex appeal of that mom and sexy (laughs) man werewolf who takes his shirt off and he is just head to toe hairy already. They were trying for Robin Williams and then they're like, I can't get him. You know, let's get the second hairiest guy in Hollywood, John Saxon. And let's just put some let's like put some spirit gum on his Mm -hmm. back and just add some. Yeah, yeah. his stand in was just like a pile of hair. (laughs) <laughs> you know um so when i when i cut the dog's hair at home um i'll always tell megan like i'll, I'll show her the shaved off parts i'll be like found you another dog and we should just like sell that to hollywood <laughs> that's the thing that i do too with my cat whenever i like brush her and i get a little ball and then i also people take photos of it and share it online and like subreddits why is that a thing that we do with animals? No. We take their fur off and then no. we present it like, hey, look, this was on an animal once. To be fair, probably most of the people on that subreddit are fucking perverts, so they're jacking well, off. Yeah. Any subreddit I'm on is filled with perverts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're there. there. <laughs> hello, hello, fellow perverts. Hello, 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 I like you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, but we got if we're talking about perverts, let's talk about John Saxon in the mm. sex scene, the first sex scene, because he is sucking the shit out of the mm. mom's toe. And it's like Quentin Tarantino has entered the chat. <laughs> sucking toe wasn't in the script, John. <laughs> <laughs> so Bacon, I actually this just dawned on me. I think I gave you two options. And I think you had yeah. the option of this and what we are going to be doing next week. What made you go with this one besides, I don't know, the obvious that it's called My Mom's a Werewolf? Uh, I have a weird, this this fascination with the way that things are titled. And I always found it so weird. It feels like you're automatically already giving up. You're already just saying to your public, hey, this movie's going to be straight fucking garbage. Is if, you put, <laughs> if you put in space at the end, or if you put like my mom's uh or my dad's uh or my parents are uh or my kids uh you know th- there I think there's only one time where that has ever worked out and it might be and it's they changed the wording and it's honey I shrunk the kids yeah this is spoken by someone who d- has not seen Howling to your sister's a werewolf because that movie okay. is the see shit. that one's a little bit different but I want to figure out how many like my mom's uh scientists. <laughs> Uh, not totally in the same vein, but one of my favorite bad movie titles. And you thought your parents were weird. My favorite part is when they throw all logic out the window with the final second reveal of anybody who kills a werewolf then becomes a werewolf, which just Never doesn't happened. make any sense make at any all. Sense. There's, There's just make no end to it. That's <laughs> King. They got King and werewolf mixed around. <laughs> <laughs> If you kill a king, you could take his spot. One of the things that's always been weird to me about this movie, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that if the local theater was doing like the Tingler House on Haunted Hill and uh, I don't know, Polyester by John Waters, and they were doing all of the different things, you were getting the the smell of vision cards and you were going to get shocked while watching the Tingler. Of course I'm going. Like there's no (laughs) way I'm not going to that. But what I'm confused by is how many people are going to watch movies with gigantic mask prosthetic heads that they clearly can't see the screen through. It's a Halloween party and they're drunk. No. I love the guy with the second head that he can make vomit. <laughs> Matt, I gotta I gotta break it to you. You could never go to one of these events because yeah. you would be so upset at the fact that nobody's watching the movies because that's not why they go there. <laughs> You're just yelling at the crowd, You're missing important plot points! <laughs> <laughs> that is painfully true because I definitely remember the one time that I saw like Rocky Horror Picture show with an audience i was like stop talking i want to hear the song <laughs> what a strange person your brother is he's incredible you don't do that you just don't it's like proposing brian, in public brian you hold don't on do a it. second pause pause are what? you gonna sit here and lecture us about what 
proper etiquette is in a classroom when you pretended to be another student for three straight days to fuck with a substitute teacher? <laughs> no, Brian! <laughs> <laughs> he almost got suspended. But <laughs> he, did. he could prove not, he could not Brian prove, Kelly, but he did. No, yeah, the, the student I the, the identity that I stole was looking at suspension, uh, but he did have physical proof and a strong alibi that he did have the flu and was not in school that day. Oh I wasn't God. a good kid. I'm just saying, just, you don't. <laughs> yeah, really, Brian has only been like, how many years have you been good in your life? Like the last th five, three? Two? I guess seven. <laughs> no, I would say, I would, I would say five. I would say five. I got sober seven years ago, but it was Two still rough years a lot and of growing five up. To, yeah, years. there was a lot of growing yeah. up to do. I just remember you telling us that story. And my favorite part of that story was that you like showed up in class because you saw that there was a sub, asked someone in the class who was out sick that day, <laughs> and just posed as their identity during that class for like two or three days. But then what almost got the kids suspended was when the sub handed out a test and you panicked and got up and screamed, I can't do this and stormed out of the classroom. Oh and my now. God. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think that Matt is the Kelly brother who lives in a rom-com, but sometimes I think that Brian lives in a rom-com, except it's like a sad rom-com where he then gets addicted <laughs> to drugs. Yeah. yeah, Brian, yeah, but he gets Brian the girl lives in the, in the team end. <laughs> but it takes fucking 12 years. <laughs> I, know. I know. It took a while. I did have one Spicoli moment in high school. <laughs> where, not like a really cool Spicoli moment, but she was also my homeroom teacher. So she knew that I was in school and sent someone to find me. And I was found in the gymnasium. What were you doing in the gym? <laughs> Shooting basketballs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shooting. You paused a little too long there. Shooting <laughs> <Yeah>. basketballs. <laughs> basketballs. <laughs> this is a family show. So one more Brian Kelly has no business saying you can't just stand up in class and do something like that story is the infamous story of when my mom had to call him and tell him to go to school to take his final for a second time. Brian had the same English teacher his that, freshman year. It was year, social studies soft, and that was Miss Greta. That was the one who sent yeah. someone looking for me. Yeah, so he had Mrs. Gretto. We'll put her name out there because this story's great. He had <laughs> Mrs. Gretto for three years and then said, well, I'll see you my senior year. And she was like, well, I don't teach senior year social studies. So he didn't fill out his final and just <gasps> wrote, see you next year on the top of it. And then she called our mom and was like, I don't normally do this, but if your son comes back to the school and takes the final for real, I will I will pretend that that didn't happen. Oh my God, what Brian. Child. <laughs> you know what pissed me off the most about that was she made me sit there for three hours taking that test. And then when I handed it in, she didn't even look at it. She just gave me the grade I needed to pass. Yeah. And then sent me home. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, Brian lives in a fucking sad rom-com, like teen comedy. Well, uh, I was watching it and in the beginning after he kills the girl and I'm like, this mom is insane. Like what mom, I understand you love your kid, but what mom is going to help you cover up a murder? And then in like 30 seconds, I was like, my mom, my yeah. mom would help me cover up a murder. <laughs> I think that this mom has been mentally making out a plan for this very scenario because she was very prepared for like, like, all right, here's what we got to do. You got to get into hiding. We're going to just lay low for a couple months. We'll move. No one will know. <laughs> like... Oh, yeah. I think mom's planning it for you. Like, mom does not want you to move out. <laughs> As is the case with, like, a lot of these movies, I feel like there'd be understanding with... It's like the, the cover-up is worse than what actually happened in a weird way. Like, it's like he pushed her because she was being mean and she tripped and hit her head on like a a cement a block rock. yeah yeah but also uh, isn't he trying to become a doctor like wouldn't you be smarter than like oh i better bury her in a shallow grave yeah like yeah. you know what i mean like well, that's what i mean it's like it's under it'd be different if it was like he got so angry he picked up a rock and beat her to death then it's like okay yeah no he's a murderer but it's like this was super accidental and like it doesn't look good but like People would understand. You don't have to go into hiding and like. But he's already an outcast in town. Yeah. Well, for starters, someone should teach this kid how to eat a chocolate bar properly. Because, oh, uh, like... yeah. But you can already tell that Ronald is bad. Uh, that's why it's called Bad Ronald, because he starts eating his birthday cake before his mom has even cut her own piece. Yeah. Mm. Rude. So, 
Rude. But I did Rude. when he Zerk pushed again. her. I did say out loud, "Bad Ronald." <laughs> I don't know if anyone else did. This is the second time that you've picked a movie where you're like, "Well, I'm sorry that I picked this piece of shit movie, but like Matt saw it when I was a kid and said it's not good. I shouldn't watch it." So now making us all watch it. Yeah, but you, but you always. Here's the thing. That was when you were pretentious. You know, and you're just like, oh, that movie's okay, but did you read the book? And I'm like, Matt, it's the Passion of the Christ. No, I didn't read the entire Bible, okay? Uh, you son of a bitch. But I will say the best thing to come out of this watch is I remember the ending, and then I see the What, dog the Passion coming. of the Christ? He gets yes. killed. No, the- yeah, he doesn't make it. Or I guess he does <laughs> days later. <laughs> Brian, we were talking a little bit while waiting for Scott to jump on, and you were a fan of this. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I knew you would. <laughs> and Scott is all about seasonal movies, and sometimes he even subconsciously picks seasonal movies. So the fact that we were doing Dead Heat around Christmas time, when it has the father from a story about Christmas known as the Christmas story is just (laughs) on par for horror movie night. We're just not posers. That's the thing. You're like, Oh, they dropped the ball on Friday the 13th. Us releasing an episode on Friday the 13th about Friday the 13th is like pothead smoking on 420. True ones (laughs) don't care. It's just another day. It's just another day. This is the deep cuts we do for you guys. So you're welcome. Yeah, I mean, I so my memories of Deep Heat is this is the second time I've ever watched Deep Heat. Deep Heat. Well, Matt, Jesus, Matt, <laughs> that's this the is porn version. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I watched the wrong movie. Matt got that confused with his other podcast, One Clip Thunder, which you can find on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been a One Clip Thunder though. Oh uh, shit! I put in the movie, and I see the name Vincent Price in the opening credits, and I'm like, oh, I for- I forgot that Vincent Price was in this movie. And then 30 minutes later, Vincent Price shows up at the movie, and I thought, huh, I forgot that Vincent Price was in this movie. <laughs> Dude, and I don't even I, – I fast forward through opening credits constantly, and so it was a complete surprise to me that he showed up, and I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, me too. I was like, hey, Vincent. Vincent's here, guys. <laughs> like we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> Until he showed up in the third act as, like, the big bad – I was fully convinced that they just sent a camera guy to Vincent Price's house and filmed him in his bed for like 15 minutes and called <laughs> yeah. it a day. Like, I was like, that makes sense for this movie. Like, they just were like, hey, we can get Vincent Price. He doesn't want to leave his bed. So he's just going to be on a videotape that <laughs> they watch. Price is a- telling you yeah, right now, if there's ever an acting career of my life, that is my contract. <laughs> Always. <laughs> You want that Brando contract where yeah. Brando's like, I'm going to show up on the set in just a moo-moo and you have to deal with it. And they're like, okay. I, but I just want to do like a remake of Casablanca, but it just cuts from like this high production value directly to me in my bedroom. <laughs> yeah. If you don't get on that plane, you're going to regret it. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. See, I got it. Call me. <laughs> it was like a 3D ride at Dutch Wonderland. You know, like... <laughs> That's exactly, it was like, I thought that the whole time I was watching it was that this is like when you go to like a Bush Gardens or like pretty much a not Disney World park and they have a 3D attraction that's been sitting there since like 1994 where like mm-hmm. there was still something exciting just about having a thing pop out of the screen. So it's like just throw in everything. Like the plot line is just based on how many things can we make this character in this ride accidentally drop stuff at the camera and nothing mm-hmm. else. Like the, the the fucking frisbee shot specifically drove me insane cuz it is like the slowest moving frisbee I've ever seen mm-hmm. captured. <laughs> well, at least that means you can catch it, right? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Hey, I'm not bad at frisbee. No, you know, no, I don't I mean you particularly. Things, I just but... mean no, no, no. I, sorry. I, as soon as I said that, I was like, shit, that sounds mean. What yeah. I meant was literally anyone could catch it. Listen, ladies out there listening, I can't do a lot of things. I can't swing a baseball bat. I can't catch a football. <laughs> but if you need a man that can catch a Frisbee and kick a hacky sack, I'm your guy. Oh, my God. Or Matt a dog. Kelly. You can get a dog. A dog can catch a Frisbee. Uh, sorry, but I thought you were going to say that he could kick a dog. I was like, what? <laughs> what? No. no, but a dog can't kick a hacky sack, so that's one thing where I'm better than a dog. Boom. But then they find the gateway to hell, which is just a hole in the basement floor that someone tried to cover up with, what, two pieces of wood? <laughs> and call it yeah. a day. Yeah, come on now. I know who did that. 
is fucking Brian. Brian's like, oh, I just found the, the tunnel to hell. Um, um, uh, here are some boards that I found literally right next to it. That'll do. <laughs> now I can go back to sitting on the couch. Yeah, Jade's like, did you cover up the, the portal to hell? I'll get to it. Brian, seriously, I need you to really cover it up. Our whole family will die if you don't. All right, I'll take care of it. You got any wood? There's a scene where the main character's co-worker is wandering around his new house, the Amityville house. But the music, this is supposed to be a suspenseful scene, and the music is like the most playful, like, like noise in the background. And I was like, who was the music supervisor on this? Who was watching Me. this scene and was like, <laughs> was like, we we need a plucky, playful song for this suspenseful scene. <laughs> like it's like had the first up until up until his because whatever the guy has the heart attack, gets attacked by flies, whatever. Up until the girl getting caught on fire, most of this movie is like the ghosts are just playing like like they're punking them. Like that's all that's happening. Yeah. Like him in the elevator is out of fucking Roger Rabbit. Like that is not a scene out of an actual horror movie with the shots of him like flying up to the ceiling and then like cowering down on the ground. Like it is insane. Now I do I enjoy the three D skeleton after she's caught on fire. That was one of the like two things I liked because I just I love me a skeleton. Let me see her bones. You didn't like the you didn't like the score, Matt? I enjoyed it. It was more fun. It made them. It made it made it more enjoyable. They're like, "What was that?" Well, we walk around the house like a skibbity bit, looking for the ghost like a skibbity. It's not far off from what it actually is. I thought he had a lot more, and then when I was looking at it, it was just that Universal recast it a lot. Yeah. So like he would have <laughs> like a Dracula, you know, like the whatever one came after the son of Dracula, and it wasn't Bela Lugosi, but it was. Put out by the same How company. How do you pronounce that last name? Legacy. <laughs> I think it's Legosi. <laughs> it is Legosi. <laughs> nah, I don't know. It's funny when a Kelly roasts a Kelly wait, about. Isn't his wait? Isn't he German? I. But Brian, you have talked about how Ed Wood is your favorite, one of your favorite movies, and they say Bella Legosi that whole movie. Okay. And I talk about how Say Anything is my favorite band, and I still call him Max Bemis, even though it's Bemis. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, touche. <laughs> Maybe Legacy was in its original German, but once he became a star in America, he was Legosi. <laughs> that's... No, no, that's not true. Listen, Khalil's name is Khalil. Just because he moved to the suburbs and everyone calls him Khalil doesn't make his name Khalil. just makes us dumb. Yeah, but if he started marketing himself as <laughs> Bell Legosi, that's on him. Oh, that's if true. he wasn't stopping people in an interview and saying, actually, it's Legacy. <laughs> like, well, like... well, in his defense, see how many times I'm like, and uh, who am I speaking with? Brian? Ryan? Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. That's, I think that's more an indictment of yourself. <laughs> no, though. I've been there. I've been yeah. called Mike a million times on support calls, and I've just been like, I don't want to embarrass this person. They're not going to talk to me ever again. There's no reason to be yeah. like, actually, it's Matt. Anyway, bye forever. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I could be Mike. That's fine. But yeah, we didn't grow up on these movies, but I think that that's almost what built like such an allure to them. And my first chance seeing this was literally as as a lot of people who listen to the show know, I get a lot of like advanced copies of Scream Factory releases. I have never clicked reply so quickly as when I got the press release that was like Scream Factory releasing Deadly Mantis and Tarantula. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it replies so fast. And I think in all caps, it was like, I have been wanting to see this movie since I was three. <laughs> like, I was so excited for Deadly Mantis. And I like usually those will show up and like I won't immediately run and throw them in the Blu-ray player. and Be like, oh, cool. I'll watch this sometime this week. Oh, I got to that Blu-ray player real fucking fast to pop in Deadly <laughs> Mantis. Like it was like a kid getting candy after going out for Halloween, where you're just like, I just want to look at the hall. I want to see what's in there. I'm going to eat all the best pieces. That was me watching Deadly Mantis. You saved some guy's job for one month. Oh, for like, sure. Like you just bought him an additional month. Like he was like, see, Steve, you told me it would be a waste of money to <laughs> to print this Blu-ray, but look at all the fan mail we're getting. <laughs> And then a month later, they're like, all right, John, we sold one copy, and it was an advanced screening for free. <laughs> I watched the most recent episode of Riverdale. Why? I haven't watched any of Riverdale. 
And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So they gave me a rundown. I want to pause you for just one second. Kathleen is going to do an episode that's just called what the fuck is happening in Riverdale? <laughs> Where she tries to explain, she goes, "This season is so off the rails because I think they did like a nine-year jump forward in time or something." What? Yeah, because they had to. They're like, "You guys are clearly thirty, <laughs> you know." Like, so I guess in a previous season there was a serial killer, the trash bag killer, TBK. There's a <laughs> there's a cult involved, and what, uh, what the fuck? Yeah, everyone's banging everyone. Um, oh, I, I only saw one episode, so I can't say for sure, but I'm starting to get the idea that the writers are fake woke because it's like, hey, here's this gay couple. Here, Here's these two gay men. Watch them kiss on the lips. Then it fades to black and you can get the assumption that they're gay. Okay, now there's these t- two gay women. All right, let's slow it down. All right, blow on her nipples. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, really caress her hair. You know, so... it's like, hyper focus on that. But the whole reason I brought it up before you go is just I really want <laughs> HMN to do a show exactly like Riverdale. And I'm like, what is the perfect comic to, to take this idea and do it with? And I think it's going to be Dilbert. I think that we should do a really dark, teeny bop Dilbert. <laughs> the problem with that is that the guy who does Dilbert is like an alt-right fanatic. Yeah, so, we got to uh, give the money yeah. to Scott Adams for that. I, You know what? Fuck it. I'll do a teeny bopper Garfield. <laughs> That's what I was. Thinking, oh, you've been like, waiting yeah, for that. But, yeah. but the thing was, we would have to, we would have to just make it like Archie. Like Garfield is just a, a just a red haired kid, and then uh, <laughs> his brother is just a blonde haired kid. I will say, my first idea was Calvin and Hobbes, and it's like, all right, it's this dark thing, and then like the kids, like Tiger is like a legitimate tiger, and like he he like kills his enemies, and I'm like. This is actually getting too badass of a show. I would actually yeah. watch the show. I need yeah. something. <laughs> I need something so I, think I can mock. Having not watched any of Riverdale, but hearing a lot of people say that the first season was not terrible and then it really uh, went off the rails. It was I have a first season was hard, dude. Like yeah. Megan and I, I slogged through it. The first two episodes are fun. I have a feeling that they didn't expect to be going this long. Yeah. Like I think that this yeah. was it's like, like supernatural. We have an idea it's, for it's every one... CW show. <laughs> yes. Literally every show on the CW, they they get like they're like, okay, well, I think we can make it through three quarters of a season, and if we don't get like canceled by that break, then we'll figure out how to end the season. And then <laughs> yes. each time they're like, fuck, fourteen year olds love this shit, and so Arrow is at like. 10 seasons supernatural yeah. will quit at 15 or dude it's ridiculous you know what scott i'm so glad that you mentioned buster point Dexter. for the people who don't get that reference that is from a patreon episode from last month where he talked about snow day and on that episode i told scott that i could beat him in a race possibly because i was such a good sprinter so anyway about <laughs> i would say approximately eight hours after that happened i was hanging out with a friend and their kid and their kid was playing a game that they like to play called Matt Try to Catch Me, where he runs around in circles and I like. <laughs> what, what are the rules? Uh, he runs around and I try to catch him, but like I obviously like don't run very fast. I, I want to keep him energized. But at one point, I had this brilliant idea where I was like, ooh, he's on the other side of the couch. I'm going to jump over the couch and get to him. And then Chris Hansen came out and said, take a seat, Matt. <laughs> so I. I run at the couch, and I put my hands on the back of the couch to jump over, and I miss the back of the couch, and instead just push down the cushion on the couch, and then knead my knee at full speed into the back of the couch, and then Matt, Uncle Matt was out of commission for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> What a loser. <laughs> it was so bad. The worst part, I don't know if it's adorable or depressing, but he went upstairs and then brought down an ice pack for a child and put it on my knee. For me. <laughs> He's like, I hope your knee feel better. And then walked off and I was like, oh, no. He was like, yeah, you're no fun anymore. So here, just take this. Yeah, yeah take this ice pack and leave me alone. Yeah, you can go and die now, Uncle Matt. <laughs> Stop being fun. <laughs> Oh, my God. And as soon as it happened, I'm, like, literally sitting there with an ice pack on my knee watching some cartoon on Disney Plus as he's running around in circles and thinking, just a couple hours ago, I told Scott that I could beat him in a race. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt here, my friend. You were talking about speed, not dexterity. That's true. (laughs) That's true. I didn't say I wanted to run and do the hurdles. Fucking hurdles were... I tried them once, and I biffed so fucking bad. (laughs) Every Saturday morning, I would run downstairs at like 6 in the morning, 
because on E, they had a show called Coming Attractions, where for 30 minutes, they just play trailers for movies that were coming out soon. I hate you. <laughs> I do. I don't like you. But I think it's important that I let you know that. listening to the Geekscape Network. 